Mystery Theater. CBC presents Mystery Theater, a series of strange tales of the supernatural and the unforeseen, of chills and thrills and adventures selected from the classics. Here, then, the story of The Monkey's Paw by W.W. W. Jacobs, in radio version by John Bethune. What a night. Herbert? Yes, Mother? You better wear your muffler when you go off to work. I will. Never forget your galoshes. It's been raining cats and dogs since supper time, and the roads have Jenny, been... please. What's the matter? We're trying to play chess. How can we concentrate if you keep chattering? I'm sorry. All right, then. Now, where were we? It's still your move, Dad. I know that, but what, what was I going to... Oh, yes. <laughs> there, I got you this time, me boy. Hmm. Yes, you're a deep one, all right. Don't tell me your father's finally beaten you, Herbert. No, not yet. He's overlooked his king. Oh, I see it. Yeah, let me have that back. Not on your life. Why not? All rules of the game, Dad. Ah, I don't know with your scientific rules. You turn what ought to be an innocent relaxation into oh, some don't talk sort of a... so much, John. How can Herbert concentrate if you keep chattering? It's all right, Mother. Go, oh, listen to that wind, would you? I'm listening. I should hardly think Sergeant Major Morris had come tonight. Oh, he'll turn up. Can't say I'd blame him if he don't. That road out there's like a bog. Check. That's the worst I live in way out here. Your friends can't even come to call. Mate. Lovers Lane, Fulham. Of all the miserable out-of-the-way places to live, this one takes the bun. Now, John. It's a disgrace, I tell you. What's the county council thinking of? That's what I want to know. Just because this is the only house in the road that's occupied, I suppose it don't matter if nobody can get near it. Now, never mind, dear. Perhaps you'll win tomorrow. Hey? <laughs> what do you mean? You know what I mean, so don't pretend. <laughs> Can't fool you, eh, Mother? <laughs> Always know what I'm up to, don't you? Well, after 30 years, I ought to. All right, then. What am I thinking right now? That you'd like a glass of grog. Right, again. Oh, shouldn't we wait till the Sergeant Major Morris comes? Ah, he won't come. Even an ardent old soldier like him would think twice before slogging his way out to a gourd-forsaken spot like this. Oh, all right. Come on now, Dad. It's not such a bad place. Leastways, it's not one of them stucco villas. In fact, it's one of the few old-fashioned houses left near London. Home-like, I call it. Oh. And so do you, or you wouldn't have bought it. And a nice job I made of that, too. Two hundred pounds still owing on Oh, don't worry. I'll work that off in no time. Matter of three years, I'd say, with the rise they promised me. Don't get married. Oh, not me, Mother. Not that sort. Oh, I wish you would, Herbert. A good lad like you with a steady job at the electrical works. Lots of time, Mother. Sufficient for the day, as the saying goes. Just now my dynamos at the plant don't leave me much time for lovemaking. <laughs> dynamos. I know sometimes I lay awake at nights and I think, if Herbert took a nap on the job and let them dynamos of his run down... All Fulham would be in darkness. Oh. <laughs> what a joke that would be. Joke? Some joke. I'd get sacked on the spot. I don't know. Well, that must be Morris after all. I never thought he'd make it. I wonder what yarn the old boy's got for us tonight. Don't slam the door, John. Well, now, Stephen. Come in, old friend. Come in. Quick, now. I can't hold this door much longer. Right. Ooh. Here, let me take your coat. Oh, that wind's enough to blow the air off your head. Aye, it's bad, all right. A mile up the road by the cemetery, it's even worse. Here's Sergeant Major Morris, Jenny. Good evening. How are you, ma'am? Oh, I'm well enough, thank you. But you must be frozen. Mm. Come, sit here by the fire. Ah, thank you kindly, ma'am. Good evening, sir. Well, laddie, Good how's evening. yourself? Not on duty, I see. Day week, eh? No, sir, night week, but there's half an hour yet. Oh, hand me the kettle, will you, Herbert? All right. Ah, uh, this is more like it. Mm. I were afraid you wouldn't come in all this rain. Oh, you don't know me, ma'am. This is nothing to what I've seen in India. Really, sir? I in the trenches at Chitro. What a time we had of it there. Sitting in a puddle with the natives taking pot shots at us and the rain pouring down in buckets. Didn't you have umbrellas? Umbrellas. Oh, <laughs> that's a good one. Did you hear that, White? Umbrellas, she says. Umbrellas and galoshes and hot water bottles, eh? 
It's plain to see you as never in the army, ma'am. Mother spoke out of kindness, sir. Well, I know it, laddie. No offence intended, ma'am. But hardship is the soldier's lot. Aye. Starvation, fever, and get yourself shot. That's the way of it. And all I've got to show now is one arm and a blooming medal. Cheer up, Morris. Here, try some of this. Oh, what have we got here? Put your nose in it, you'll see. Ah, uh, hot whiskey. With sugar and a slice of lemon. Well, now, I don't mind if I do. Here's to another thousand a year. Uh, same to you and many of them. Oh, that's the stuff they give the troops. Here, laddie. Ain't you going to join us? No, thanks. My work don't go with whiskey. Not even a drop? No, sir. I've got to keep a cool head and a steady eye and a still hand. If I don't, the flywheel might gobble me up. Abba, don't say such things. Ah, you electricians. Sort of magicians, you are. Light, says you, and light it is. Power, says you, and the trams go whizzing. Knowledge, says you, and the words go humming to the ends of the world. It fair beats me, it does. And I've seen a bit in my time, too. Indian magic, do you mean? Aye, fact he is. I've seen him do things you wouldn't believe. Really? Such as what? Well, I've seen a co with no more clothes on than a baby. Oh, dear. Uh, if you know what I mean, ma'am. I've seen him take an empty basket, empty, mind you, and tie it all round with ropes. Oh, you mean a basket trick. That's just a fake. Fake, you call it. I tell you, I've seen it. So have I, and I've read how it's done. Well, I could do it myself with a bit of practice. Could you now? Well, what do you say to an old fakir chucking a rope in the air? In the air, mind you, and swarming up it the same as if it was hooked, then vanishing clear out of sight. Oh, but that's oh. impossible. I've seen it with my own eyes, oh, lad. Oh, come on. You mean to say you doubt my words? No, no, the lad's only taking you off, all in fun. But it's true, I tell you, and that's not all. Why, if I chose, I could tell you things... But no, you don't get any more yarns from me. Nonsense, old friend. You're not going to get shirty about a bit of fun? Yeah. Let me fill your glass. Uh, thank you kindly, ma'am. You know, I'd like to go to India myself someday. Just to look round a bit. See them fakirs and jugglers and old temples and things. You're better off where you are, White. There's things in India it's best for a man not to know about. What was that you started telling me about the other day? About a monkey's paw or something? Nothing. Uh, at least it's nothing worth hearing. A monkey's paw? Aye. Come on, Morris, tell us about it. No, it's nothing. Don't go on about it. You said you always carried it with you. So I do, uh, for fear of what might happen. Here's your glass, Sergeant Major. Uh, thank you, ma'am. What's the monkey's paw for, sir? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Oh, yes, I would. Have you got it with you now? Of course. Well, can we see it? Oh, it's nothing to look at. Just a, just an ordinary little, little paw dried up into a mummy. Here you are. Oh, it's dirty. Give us a look. Oh, it's all dried up. I said so. And, um, what might there be special about it? That there paw has had a spell put on it. Oh, dear. Mm. Give it back to him, John. Oh, hi, here, here, take it. Who was it put the spell on it? An old fakir. A very oldy man he was. Used to sit all doubled up in one spot. Of course. Sat like that for going on 15 years, oh, thinking yeah. of things. And he wanted to show that people was ruled by fate. That everything was cut and dried from the beginning, as you might say. That there weren't no getting away from it. And that if you tried, you'd catch it off. Don't say. So he put a spell on this bit of a paw. Why a monkey's paw? Oh, it might have been anything else, but he took the first thing that came handy. Aye. He put a spell on it and made it so that three people could each have three wishes. Oh. But, but mark you, though those wishes were granted, those three people would have caused to wish they hadn't been. But uh, how could the wishes be granted? He didn't say it would all happen so natural, you might think it was just a coincidence, if so disposed. Why haven't you tried it, sir? I have. Oh, you've had your three wishes? Yes. And were they granted? They were. Has uh, anybody else wished? Yes. The first owner had his three wishes. Oh, yes. Yes, he had his three wishes, all right. I don't know what his first two were, but the third was for death. Oh. That's how I got the paw. Well, it seems you've only got to wish for things that can't have any bad luck about them. Ah, you don't understand, laddie. Uh, Morris, if you've had your three wishes, mm -hmm. the paw's no good to you now. What do you keep it for? Fancy, I suppose. I did have some idea of selling it, but I don't think I will. It's done enough mischief already. Besides, people won't buy. Some of them think it's a fairy tale, and someone to try it first and pay after. Well, if you could have another three wishes, would you? I don't know. I don't know. 
No. No, I'm damned if I would. I've had my fill of this cursed pot. It's time the world was rid of it. Hey, not in the fire. Yes, in the fire. There. No, no. Here, I'll get it out. Don't be a fool. Let it burn. Let the infernal thing burn, I tell you. Not if I can... Ah, got it. Here we are. Is it burnt? No, it's just singed a bit. Chuck it back again, man. No! If you don't want it, give it to me. Not I. Not I. My hands are cleared of it. I threw it on the fire. If you keep it, don't blame me for what happens. But if you have any sense, you'll pitch it back. Yes, do as he says, John, please. No, I'm going to keep it. Now, what do you say, Herbert? Oh, I say keep it if you want to. Stuff and nonsense, anyhow. Stuff and nonsense. Yes, I wonder. I wish I could... Stop! What? Mind what you're doing. That's not the way. What do you mean? Not... I mean, that's not the right way to wish. Well, what is the right way? Oh, don't have anything to do with it, John. That's what I say, ma'am. But if I don't tell him what to do, he might go wishing for something he didn't mean to, by accident. Look. You hold the paw in your right hand first. Then wish aloud. Huh? But I warn you, White. I warn Sounds you. Sounds like the Arabian Nights. What shall I wish for, Jenny? Well, let me see. You might wish for me four pair of ants to do my housework. Oh, 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 right you are. Here we go. I wish... Stop it. it. Stop it. What's the matter? If you must wish, wish for something sensible. All right. Suppose I wish... No, no, no. no. Wait, wait. I can't stand this. Where's my coat? You're not going. Uh, Yes, ma'am, I must. My nerves aren't up to this. Get my coat, will you, laddie? Well, if you wait a bit, sir, I'll come along with you. I'll go your way. Oh, uh, thank you, lad, but I, I can't stay any longer. Not even for another glass of Not grog? for anything. I don't want to be here when you wish. And wish you will as soon as my back is turned. Well, what makes you think because so? Because I know. I know. Pitch it in the fire. Here's your coat, sir. Thank you. Now, mind, I warned you, White. I warned all of you. Remember? Yes, yes. Don't worry about us, old friend. Here. Here. What's this? For the monkey's paw. No, no, I'll take no money for it. Yes, you will. Well, good night, all. Good night, night. Sergeant. Well, what do you make of that? (laughs) Poor old Sergeant Major. If there's no more in this monkey's paw than there is in his other stories, we shan't make much out of it. John, did you give him something for it? Oh, just a trifle. Well, you shouldn't have throwing your money about. I wonder... Wonder what? I wonder whether we haven't better chuck it back on the fire. What for? Why, we're all going to be rich and famous and happy. Throw it on the fire indeed, when you've given good money for it. Wish to be an emperor, Dad. Then you can't be henpecked anymore. That'll be enough of that, young man. You be quiet. (laughs) You know, when I stop to think of it, I don't know what to wish for, and that's a fact. I seem to have got all I want. If only you'd cleared the debt on the house, you'd be perfectly happy, eh, Dad? Oh, that's right. Well, go ahead. Wish for the 200 pounds. That'll just do it. Oh, shall I? Of course. Here's the paw. Take it in your right hand and wish. No, don't, John. Don't have anything to do with it. Go on, Dad, go on. Yes, by Jove, I will. I I wish for 200 pounds. (gasps) John, what is it? It it moved. As I wished, the paw twisted my hand like a snake. Nonsense. Here, let me see it. Why, it's as stiff as a bone. I tell you, it moved. Oh, it was just your fancy. No! Well, I don't see any money anywhere, and I bet I never shall. Whew, thank God there's no harm done. But that give me a shock and no mistake. Oh, half past eleven, time I was off. Mind you take your galoshes. I don't. And you won't be late for breakfast, will you? Not if I can help it, but I'll be walking home, you know. Walking? Why? Well, I can't take my bike in this weather. So don't wait for me after nine. All right. Have you got your scarf? Aye, uh, all set. Good night, Mother. Good night, dear. You'll find the 200 pounds tied up in the middle of your bed, I expect, Dad. Don't joke about it, son. And a monkey hanging by his tail from the bedpost, watching you count your golden sovereigns. Herbert. Yes? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Good night, my boy. Good night, Dad. Oh, it's stiff again. Ah, there. I must get Herbert to look at it in the morning. Well, I'm off to bed. Will you see to the fire? Yes, all right. <gasps> hey, Jenny! Jenny! What's the matter? 
wrong? What is it? I, it's nothing. It's nothing. I, I just saw faces in the fire. Oh. Well, come along to bed, dear. you are. No sign of Herbert yet? No. He hasn't got his bicycle. He said uh, not to wait after nine. Oh, yes, I'd forgotten. <laughs> well, he's got a fine day for walking home. Cleared up nicely. Oh, by the way, where did you leave the monkey's paw last night? On the mantelpiece. Still there. Silly, dirty thing. Spells indeed. Oh, old Morris and his yarns. I suppose all old soldiers are the same. The, the idea of our listening to such nonsense... How could wishes be granted nowadays? Doesn't seem likely, does it? And all the rubbish about it's making you unhappy if if your wish was granted. Ha ha! You've been thinking about it, have you? No, of course not. But, um, how could 200 pounds hurt anyone? Well, I suppose it might drop on your head in a lump. Don't see any other way. Though, mind you, Morris said it would happen so naturally that you might take it for a... A coincidence, if so disposed. Well, it hasn't happened. That's all I know, and it isn't going to. What's that? Postman, of course. Yes, there's a letter in the box. A letter? Oh, John. Suppose... Suppose what? Suppose it's the 200 pounds. Eh? Right? Yeah, don't talk nonsense. What's got into you? Nothing, I just thought... Another bill, I expect. No. Who, uh, who's it for? You. Yeah, let me see. Hey, that's odd. Well, go on, open it. All right, all right, don't get excited. Take care, don't tear it. If it's bad notes. Bad notes, fat shot. Oh, looks like some kind of document. Ah, and a slip of paper. What does it say? It says, sir, enclosed, please find receipt for interest on the mortgages of £200 in your house duly received. Well, that comes of listening to tipsy old soldiers. What does? You thought there was big notes in it. I did not. I said all along... The How old... Herbert will laugh when I tell him. Well, you're not going to tell him. You're going to keep your mouth shut. That's what you're going to do. God, I never hear the last of it. It serves you right for trying to frighten us last night. What do you mean? Seeing the paw moved when you wished. But he did. It did move. Now that, I'll swear to you. You thought it did. No, I say it did. There was no thinking about it. Half past nine. Herbert should be here by now, walking or not. He's off at eight. Ah, oh, but he has to change and wash before he leaves the plant. Still, mm-hmm. it shouldn't take him all this time. I'll, uh, I'll look and see if he's coming down the road. Your sausages are getting cold. See him? No. But there's a man by the garden gate. Looks, looks to be a gentleman. What about him? He's looking at the house. As if he wants to come in. But he can't seem to make up his mind. Oh, go on. You're full of fancies this morning. No, he's going on. No, no, he's coming back. Well, don't let him see you peep in. John, he looks like a sort of lawyer. Well, what of it? Oh, you know. But suppose... Suppose he's coming about the 200 pounds. Oh, nonsense. Come and eat your breakfast. Where is he now? At the gate again. He's coming in. Oh, dear. And me all untidy. What's the matter? He's made a mistake. Come to the wrong house. Oh, I'll go. I'll go and see who did. Is this uh, Mr. White? Yes. Come in, sir. Uh, thank you. Please step in. You must overlook me being so untidy. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning. My name is Sam. Uh, won't you please be seated? Uh, thank you, no, I... I think not. I, uh... You, um, wanted to see me, sir? Oh, yes. Yes, I, uh, I come from the electrical works. Oh, then it's our son, Herbert, you want to see. He'll be home soon, if you care to wait. Uh, no, no, I, I was asked to call. That is, the company sent me to, uh... It, is anything the matter? Yes, I'm afraid so. Herbert, what's happened? Is he hurt? Now, now, Mother, don't jump to conclusions. Let the gentleman speak. 
Um, you've not brought bad news, sir, I'm sure. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. White. There's, there's been an accident at the plant. Herbert! Huh? He's been hurt. Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, John! Badly hurt, sir? Yes, very badly. Is he in pain? Oh, no, 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 he's not in pain. Oh, thank God. Thank God. But if he's badly hurt... Good God. You can't mean it. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, my boy. My boy. Oh, no, 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 no. Go on, sir. What happened? Well, he was telling his mates a story. Something that uh, happened here last night. He was laughing about it and not paying attention. And, and the machinery caught him. Oh, no. The machinery caught him. I see. I, I see. The company wished me to convey their sincere sympathy with you in, uh, in your great loss. Great loss, yes. And I was to say further. He was our only child. Oh, please understand. I'm I'm only the company's servant. I'm only obeying orders. Yes. Machinery caught him. I was to say the company disclaims all responsibility, but in consideration of your son's services, they wish to present you with a sum of money as compensation. For our great law. How much? Two hundred pounds. Oh, no! Two... Two uh, hundred... John! Time we got to bed, Jenny. Jenny? What? I said it's time for bed. What are you doing at the window? Looking up the road. What for? You can't see anything. Yes, I can. The moonlight's so bright you can almost see the cemetery. Oh, Jenny, please come away from there. You'll get cold. It's colder where he is. Aye. Aye. Is it only a week since we laid him there? I don't know. We don't take much account of time now, do we? Why should we? He'll never come home again. There's nothing to think about now. Or to talk about. He took all our hopes with him. And our wishes. I and all our... John! Hey, what, what, what on earth's the matter? The paw. The monkey's paw. What about it? Where is it? What happened to it? I don't know why. You haven't done away with it? I haven't seen it since... Well, well, find it. Find it. Well, it, it was here on the mantelpiece the last time I... Oh, yeah, here it is. Oh, thank God. Why didn't I think of it before? Why didn't you think of it? What are you talking about? The other two wishes. What? We've only had one. Oh, wasn't that enough, Jenny? No. We'll have one more. Don't you see? We'll wish our boy alive again. Good. God, woman, are you bad? We had our first wish granted. Why not our second? Jenny, you don't know what you're saying. He's been dead for more than a week. When they showed him to me, I... I only knew him by his clothing. If you weren't allowed to see him then, how could you bear to see him now? I don't care. Bring him back. Take the pawn wish. No, I can't touch it. You must. Here, take it. Now, wish. Jenny, please. Wish, 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 wish. Oh, wish. God, forgive me. I wish my son alive again. Oh, what's happened? I can't see. The candle's gone out. But how could it? I didn't... Wait. Listen. Jenny, where are you? At the window. Well, what do you see? Nothing. Oh, thank God. Nothing at all. Along the whole length of the road, there's not a living thing. It's as empty as our lives. We still have each other. And our memories. Memories. <laughs> there, now, there, now. Don't take on so. Here, I'll light the candle. And then we'll go up to bed. <laughs> there. 
That's better, eh? Come along now, Mother. I'm no longer a mother. Oh, Herbert. Herbert. What's that? Nothing. Just a, just a rat in the wall. It's Herbert. It's Herbert. He's at the door. Here, stop. What are you going to do? I'm going to open it. No, for God's sake. Let me go. Why are you trying to hold Jenny, me? I beg you, don't open that door. I must. Let me go. Think what we might see. Do you think I'm afraid of me, own child? No, Let me no, go. No, no. I'm coming, Herbert. No, I'm coming. no, Jenny, don't do it. Go on, what can I do? What can I... The poor. The monkey's poor. There's one wish left. Now, don't. Come and help me. I can't. I can't. Where is that spore? Where did I drop it? John, help me, quick! Where is that thing in God's name? Where did it fall? Wait, Herbert! I'm trying to open it! It's moving! It's moving! Ah, Here it is! I wish my son dead! I wish him dead! And at peace... No one here. There's nothing. Thank God. Oh, thank God. Mystery Theater has presented A Monkey's Paw by W.W. W. Jacobs. In radio version by John Bethune. Production and direction, Gene Bartels. In the cast, Cosette Lee as the mother... Alan King, the father, and Jim Bradford, Herbert, the son. Glenn Morris was heard as Sergeant Major Morris, and Gilly Fennick, Samson, the man from the electrical company. Sound effects were by Alex Sheridan, and technical operation, Henry Durda. This is Bill Lorne speaking. <laughs>